Chapter 6, Energy. Our first topic that we're going to discuss and look at in Chapter 6 happens to be work. Now, we're going to define work based upon the um, equation, which work is equal to a force that is applied over a distance. So when we're looking at a force, it's got to be constant. So the force has got to be constant. It's being applied all the time. And the distance traveled must be in the same direction. as the force. Okay? So that's going to be important to us. So when we look at something, we start dealing with a force. The basic concept here is, okay, let's say we got somebody here and they have a box on the ground. They're going to pick the box up with a force and it's going to travel a distance. So we have a force and a distance. They're both going in the same direction. So thus, we have work. Okay? Because we, the, the for, there is a net force going up. If we change the scenario and we put the person carrying the box. Now, the guy is traveling at a constant velocity. So the sum of the forces here, when we look at the forces, the sum of the forces is zero. So there's no work. You're going to have to be very cautious on this because work has to be in the same direction as the force. So you have to be very careful on that. Now the next thing is if we look at anything, let's say we're dealing with our class pulling of a box. And, you know, here is the string, there's our force of tension. When we look at our components here, looking at these, which force is going to be involved in the work? So our work equals our distance. Well, let's rewrite that here. So when we look at this, we've got our force and our distance. But we're looking at this. And here's our angle, theta. That's going to be a cosine of the angle. So we can throw into our trig there. Okay, when we look at this, we talk about um, work. What unit? Joules is the unit of measure. Now, joules is energy. Actually, it's any form of energy. Okay, we're going to do a quick overview. Uh, problem solving. We're just going to lay it out. So on our problem solving, number one, FBD. Number two, lay out positive and negative directions. Let's rephrase that. Determine positive negative directions. Okay, now uh, number three, use Newton's laws. To determine forces. Okay, number four, identify work done. Number five, and uh, 
sum up the work. So you might have more than one work, so you might have to add them together. Now, we've got to be careful with that. So when working at it, we might have to do a little bit more than just the... Okay, we're, look, we're up to chapter 6, section 3 now. Now, we're going, we're going to be bringing in kinetic energy and the work energy principle. Okay. So that's what we're going to be working with. Now, a couple of things that we need to discuss is that what is kinetic energy? Okay, well, let's, let's, let's throw an equation down. Kinetic energy is one half times the mass times the velocity squared. So the bigger the object is, the more kinetic energy it has. The more velocity it has, the more energy it has. Now, however, the velocity has the greatest effect because it's squared. Okay? Meaning if I double the mass, I'm just multiplying the whole equation by 2. But if I double the velocity, you're squaring it. So that makes it 4. So the kinetic energy is four times greater. So that's a big difference. Now, when we look at this, the kinetic energy and the work energy principle sets it up like this. When we're dealing with this, uh, the work done is equal to the change in the kinetic energy. So if I speed something up, I put energy into it. I made it have more energy. If I slowed something down, I did work on it. To slow it down, that means I took energy out of it. Now when we look at it, what we do is, is we do one half mv final squared minus one half mv initial squared. So when we're looking at this, we got to think, are we speeding up, slowing down? Which way are we going? Are we putting energy into it to make it go faster? Are we taking energy out of it to make it go slower? What are we doing? And that, that's how we're going to approach most of those concepts. Um... Okay. All right. Now, when we look at uh, chapter six, six, section four, potential energy, we're going to be talking about uh, storing energy. Okay. If we relate it to work, we can think of it as placing energy there for use at a later date. Uh, examples of potential energy okay uh, springs uh, rubber bands uh, gravity that's potential energy due to the height above the ground So when we're looking at this, we normally deal with, one of the things that we deal with is this. Let's say um, we have an object here on the ground. We have a table, and we're going to lift the object up with a force, bring it up, and set it on top of the table. Now we increase the height. Now, when we look at that, we did a force, we picked it up, we picked up the object, we raised it to the top. So we did work because we had a force and we moved it a distance. Now, when we set the box down, what happened to that energy? Remember, energy can't be created or destroyed, just transformed. 
Well, the minute you set the box down on the tabletop, it turned into potential energy. Well, the potential energy is related to the mass times the gravity times the height. In this case, that's the y distance that was changed. So, the work here, which is force times distance, equated to the potential energy, which was mass times gravity times height. Now, you can simplify this. If you sit down and think about this, and I might be going a little bit over this, so force times distance equaled mass times gravity times height. Well, that makes sense. The distance that it moved was the height that it moved. The force was the force. How much force did it take to lift it? Well, that's got to be equal to the mass times the gravity. So those two are equivalent equations. So what all does that mean for us? That means we can do a lot. Um... When we look at some other potential energies, let's look at springs. Let's talk about springs. Um, you don't work with that much in the ninth grade, but when we look at this, um, let's let's take let's take a spring. So we got a spring here that's stretched out. Okay, so the x distance that I've compressed it is zero. Now, uh, this is unstretched. So let's stretch that spring out. So we've now stretched it a distance x. So what, what did we do? Did we put energy into it or take energy out of it? You know, we did something. What we did was is we took a force, we'll call it the spring, and that's going to be related to the spring constant times the distance you either stretched or compressed. Now, that means that every spring is unique and they each have their own k value. So when we're working with this, All right, now, since since we're dealing with a force here and a distance, you know, we could be talking about energy. Now, if we compress, if we compress or stretch, we're going to create potential energy because when we release it, it moves. So we're storing a potential energy here, and we what we have is potential energy elastic which is equal to one half times the spring constant times the distance it was compressed squared. Now that's just a basic overview of that. Now we're going to talk about um, the book opposes it as conservative forces and non-conservative forces. Um, we're going, I'm just going to approach it this way as conservation of energy and we're going to talk about the conservative forces I mean conservative um, energy with conservative forces okay so I'm going to approach it that way so basically what we're dealing with is that the total energy in the system the total energy in the system has got to be equal to the kinetic energy plus the potential energy so we know that for a fact, that whatever energy we have has to flip-flop back and forth between those two. Now, that's going to be a... So that's what we're dealing with. Okay, kinetic energy changes into potential energy, changes into kinetic energy, changes into potential energy. That lets us solve problems. That lets us cheat. Now, so what we deal with is this. 
say we've got a let's put fuzzy on a diving board okay fuzzy's up there on a diving board right now he is 100 percent pe so we have let's say we have 100 joules of pe so at the halfway point what his, what's his potential energy going to be well it's going to be 50 what's his kinetic energy going to be it's going to be 50. Now, right before Fuzzy realizes somebody forgot to fill the pool, he's going to hit the ground right here. Now, pause for a second. Think to yourself, what's it going to be? What's going to happen to the potential energy here? It's going to be zero kinetic energy is going to max out. Now, we can use the concept of energies to determine how fast Fuzzy hits the unfilled pool, which makes it kind of sweet. Now, I'm one, that's basically an overview. Uh, the only thing that we don't have, we need to really talk about real quick, need to talk about power. Now, that's the rate at which work is done. Now, that's, uh, let's see, the, the power is equal to the work divided by the time. Now, that is the energy, or the change in the energy, over time. Now, it's got a, it's, it's got a unit. Its unit to measure is watts. Okay, so it's a W. Now, that's pretty much all it for a quick overview of the chapter, chapter 6. What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to break up some of the... questions and problems and break them up into different lecture points and I'll start them next. You know, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to post an assignment that kind of goes along with this for you to take a look at.